That was heavy. <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome back. So, I've been ill the past week and a half with COVID, so I've not been able to get in the workshop and film. Whew. I'm back now, stronger than ever, evidently, uh, and ready to progress the build. So, for today, we're going to need some wood to do the back of the cabinet. What I've got here is a pallet. It's actually one of the pallets that the barrels got delivered to me on. So you can use other wood that's available. Just got to make sure that it's half decent because when you open up those cabinet doors, that is going to be the wood that you see. So this is quite nice. There's no big breaks in it and we can sand it back and stain it. But obviously, if you can't get hold of a pallet, you can just go get some reasonable thickness wood from your department store. So there's only one thing to do from now to take this pallet apart. <sighs> right, so now we've taken our pallet apart and we've got our wood. Again, you don't have to use a pallet, but I've got one lying around, so I'm gonna use it. Now, what we need to do is line our uh, lengths of wood up on the back of the barrel, see how much spacing we need. We'll screw them down, mark them up, take them off, and then cut the edges on them. So then we should have a nice, Back for the barrel. We'll worry about the lids and the base later. Let's get to it. So, you're going to want to make sure that your back of your cabinet goes end to end of your barrel. This is important for when we put the lids and the, uh, the base on. So just feel where the edge of the barrel is, make sure your wood's up against that. Then make sure at the other end, it's also up against it. Now we'll go around to the other side of the barrel and make sure it's all square. Right, there we go. So we've got all of our lengths of wood on the back going the full length of the barrel. Uh, it doesn't matter if they're overhanging at the moment because we're going to choose the sections of the wood. Like, say, for here, this one's got a bit of damage. So I will have this one overhanging here because I'm going to be cutting it off, getting rid of any damaged parts. Now, uh, I had different lengths and widths of wood to use, uh, but if you do have trouble making the full length of the barrel, if you're overhanging it, just mark it up where it overhangs and then cut it off either with a jigsaw or a handsaw and then come back to this part. So as I said earlier we're going to have a look at our lengths of wood, identify any problem areas, any knots like this here which is going to be a problem for putting a screw through or any sections that are damaged and we're just going to make sure that they're not going to be a part of our back and that they're parts that overhang the barrel which we will cut off. To make this next bit easier, I've removed the other lengths of wood. This makes it easier for us to see where the edges of the cabinet are to make sure that we're screwing directly into the cabinet. We're not going to end up with screws sticking out the side. Now, as I've learned from my previous projects, always pre-drill the hole first before you put the screw in. It reduces the risk of splitting the wood.
Now, we've got the lengths of wood on the back of our cabinet now. Um, so it'll look a bit like this, and a bit like this. So you've got your doors there. Might need to get someone to give you a hand because it is quite, uh, well, quite awkward to move around. But what we need to do now is lay this face down uh, and then we'll trace out where we need to cut these back planks off. Uh, it'll be a lot easier to trace it like this and then take the wood off and cut down the trace lines rather than trying to cut it when it's on the barrel because you might mark up the bands or the wood. That's quite nice, that. Ooh, watch your fingers. There we go. And now do the other side. All right, now we've got our sides marked up. We need to turn the barrel back over, unscrew the wood, and cut the, uh, the excess material off. There we go. Now you can just start taking off the lengths individually, cutting them down, putting them back on. Uh, I'm gonna be using a jigsaw for this. If I can just get to it. So I'm gonna be using a jigsaw. You can do the same with a wood saw. The only neat trick that you can use the jigsaw for, if I can figure out how to do it, there you go. You can change the angle of which you cut. So I am planning on, if I've got a spare bit of wood here. I am planning on cutting an angle like that. You'll see more of what I mean once I've done the first cut, but essentially, instead of having a flat edge to the, the back of the barrel, we'll have a slightly angled one.
the lengths of wood on the back cut down. Now, it's not quite as smooth on the edges as I would like, so I'm actually going to go over the edges with the, uh, the sanding disc. And whilst I'm at it, I'm going to see what it looks like if we sand the back down as well. <laughs> So it definitely looks a lot better when it's sanded. So I think what I might do is take these back off again and sand the inside. So if you do want to sand the inside, I recommend doing it when you're cutting the ends off of the wood. That way you don't have to keep taking it off and on again. But if you screwed it on like we have, it's not that hard to take the planks off again. But that's quite nice and definitely, definitely recommend sanding the sides down. Even though we put that nice angle on with the jigsaw, it still wasn't tidy enough for me. So it now looks a lot better. It's a lot smoother. There's no risk of you getting splinters or cutting yourself. And uh, yeah, so all I'll do now is stain the back and uh, clear coat it to protect it. But you're not really going to see that. What you want to see is what it looks like on the inside now. Alright guys, that's it for now. Um, stay tuned for the next video and as always, thank you for watching. I really appreciate you guys subscribing and liking. It's good to get that sort of feedback back from you to know that what I'm doing is uh, getting out there to you guys and it's becoming a little bit more of a community. Uh, we're, we're nearly at 50,000 views so far and that blows my mind. I, uh, I can't wait to put out more content and uh, there's a few things that unlock when you get more subscribers. So there's a, uh, like a discuss discussions page that you can have that I'm really excited for when we hit 250 subscribers. Uh, and there's a few more things that unlock after that. So yes, I'm, I'm very excited and it's all thanks to you guys. So thank you very much. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.